न्यूज सर्विसेज डिवीजन ऑफ आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी ब्रिंगिंग यू द लेटेस्ट डेवलपमेंट्स फ्रॉम इंडिया अनएक्सप्लोर्ड नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन टुडे वी ब्रिंग यू एन इंटरव्यू विथ मिस्टर ए सेल्व कुमार director inland waterways authority of india guwahati wherein he discussed inland water sector of northeast we will also talk about meghalayan age geologists have decided to classify the past 4200 years as the meghalayan age it is the most recent unit of the geologic time scale in the 4.6 billion year history of the earth This age is named after the northeast Indian state of Meghalaya where the stalagmite was found and this is used to mark out its years but for now let's go over to Sikkim where Kissing district recently completed its third edition of the initiative on building a silent reading community Literature is the safe and traditional vehicle through which we learn about the world and pass on values from one generation to the next. If you know how to read, then the whole world opens to you. Sikkim's Gising District Administration has taken a unique initiative to promote the habit of reading. Gising Reads is a silent reading community which aims to make the world read regularly and normalize reading outdoors our gang talk correspondent has filed the report gazing reads was conceptualized by an online chain of reading groups popular on instagram the initiative involves silent and collective reading for 3 hours each sunday which is expected to shape a reading culture in gazing district although initiated by the district administration The objective is to decentralize it to NGOs, student bodies, teachers and volunteers. This the collector Yashi De Yongda speaks about Gazing Reads. So with regards to this reading program that uh, we recently initiated, improving upon or rather encouraging reading not only in schools also in uh, at the community level by mobilizing NGOs, we've set up libraries we've set up a police picket post come village library where uh, right here in the district just below the town basically the whole idea is to encourage reading have a robust community of readers in the district we've had several workshops and currently side by side we are having a reading program for uh, primary schools and we've got on board uh, talented resource persons who are based out of gangtok but who are now stationed in the district they have given me the concept note of how it is to be carried out we will be rolling out with this reading program wherein we equip rather we train the teachers first on how to get the children interested to read first we get the teachers themselves as readers on board and then further it will be this training will be imparted uh, to the children and student bodies habitually go there every 9 am saturday and uh, they read there in the open parks now in sikkim right now we head long into the monsoons so our weather does not permit us to read in open spaces but my idea was to you know stress on reading in open spaces under the open sky but the weather is a challenge we gathered at the tourist information center which has a roof over its head but it's open on the side so uh, we had 22 volunteers who came to read that day and i'm there only to provide stewardship in the beginning i do see a lot of interest from the student community there is the head girl of kyongsa girls senior secondary school the head boy of pelling senior secondary school the students union of our sanchaman limbu government degree college a couple of ngos so basically the idea is first we will started with galjing reads so this will go on for a couple of weeks then slowly slowly it has to be decentralized to every locality you know the movement will pick up and the readers will get interested and there they will just come with one book and we'll provide books also they can come and choose from our collection or they are free to come with any reading material it can be anything it can be on hard copy it can be on the mobile tablets ipads anything and some can even come and silently do their work 
on the laptop so it is like a free forum but the intent and the basic idea is to get people to read and also uh, i realized myself while i was at lal bag in that open park with the sound of birds chirping it you know felt very therapeutic also uh, sitting there in silence reading a book of course i was reading the disaster management act on my gadget but uh, you know quietly reading with a community of readers so it is therapeutic it is also a kind of meditation it is a time to do reflection also and to just ease the mind and relax the mind so that is the whole intent so a lot of response has been coming on the instagram page and through the medium of all india radio thank you for having me this is a message and a shout out to everybody that they are uh, you know free to join this uh, reading exercise for 3 hours engaging reads we are going to follow the format of 9:30 to 12:30 so people will gather read and go back and then when we have better weather in the autumn maybe after the rains go away so we will identify parks and we will maybe do it in rabdinsi ruins we will go to open spaces and meadows even we can do in our paddy fields at that time it will be very dry and conducive for reading so i request everybody to come forward and join this uh, group of readers so that our district can have robust reading group earlier this month gazing reads completed its third edition of silent reading readers came together at the district community library gazing bazaar dotum so peling and at lungsu hang playground kanchanjunga waterfalls a new segment called gazing paints has also been introduced to engage school children in art and painting the initiative has helped revive the district community library which was otherwise not visited frequently by students or the public with madhu sharma and saikit sarkar this is tasha mobutia for akashwani news sikkim Welcome to the new age. You've been living in it this whole time. The north eastern state of India, Meghalaya, will be remembered for a long time in geological history. The last 4200 years on earth are being classified as a new age, and geologists are calling it as a Meghalayan age. The latest distinct geologic stage in the 4.6 billion year history of the earth. The Meghalayan age has been marked by the onset of a mega drought that destroyed a number of civilizations around the world. Such ages divide the earth's existence into multiple slices of time, and each slice of time corresponds to important events such as the breaking up of continents, dramatic shifts in climate, and the emergence of particular types of animals and plant life. In order to classify a geological period, Geologists examine various aspects such as sedimentary deposits, ice cores, and deposits below the sea floor for clues regarding the occurrence of dramatic changes on earth. These changes should reflect explicitly and should be global in its extent. In the case of Meghalayan classification, this change was indicated in a stalagmite cave found in the Mwalu cave. which is one of the deepest and the longest caves in India this stalagmite cave gave a clear indication of ways in which oxygen atoms changed which is a proxy for climate specifically precipitation said mike walker head of the working group on the subdivision of holocene at the international commission on stratigraphy icf the meghalayan is the youngest age to be recorded and runs from 4200 years to the present the age is said to have begun with a destructive drought whose effect lasted for approximately 200 years the drought severely destroyed civilizations in egypt greece syria palestine mesopotamia the indus valley and the yangtze river valley several shifts in oceans and atmospheric circulation may have caused the disastrous drought due to the stalagmite found in the Mwalu cave in Meghalaya the northeastern state is now part of geological history situated 
at an elevation of 1290 meters the condition in Molu cave had been suitable for preserving chemical signs of transition that have been highlighted by an analysis of stalagmite the megalian age is significant as it will be the first formal geological subdivision of the holocene epoch the holocene epoch is the current age we live in and reflects everything that happened over the past 11700 years with the inclusion of the megalian age the holocene epoch will now be formally subdivided into three ages of greenlandian north gripian and megalian Stanley Finney, professor of geological sciences at Long Beach State University, said that the Megalian age is unique among the periods on the geologic time scale as its beginning coincides with a global cultural event produced by a global climatic event. Our personality of the week is Mr. A. Selva Kumar, Director Inland Waterways Authority of India, Guwahati. He is being interviewed by Manas Pritham Sarma. Good evening to the all the listeners of North East Delhi. This episode we are joined by Mr. A. Selva Kumar, who is the Regional Director in Guwahati of IWAI. Welcome to this episode of North East Delhi, Mr. Selva Kumar. Would you please tell us what are the prospects and opportunities in inland water sector in North East particularly? Under the leadership and guidance of our Honorable Union Minister for Port Shipping and Waterways, Sri Sarvananda Sonawal Sir, we are developing this national waterways. This river Brahmaputra is national waterway number two. Now presently we have taken a lot of activities for developing this national waterway. If you see this one, first the major important project what we are undertaking the development is the ship repair facility which is developed in a two phases. Total project cost is around 450 crore. Mm -hmm. Now first phase already sanctioned and work has been awarded to Mrs. LNT Geostructure. Now work has already started. That is the one of the developmental work we are already started. Then another one major work is connecting this Pandu port with the national highway. That work also we have already awarded through this PWD road, government of Assam. And that once the road connectivity is there, then this port as well as the ship repair facility which we are connecting now is in a new construction, that both will have a direct access to national waterway. Third is that construction at Joey Gopa site. Mm -hmm. Joey Gopa also we are constructing one permanent terminal at Joey Gopa. That work also we are undertaking through NHIDCL. They are already around 35% work has been completed and we are planning to complete this work by this December 2023 only. All material men mobilized, everything has mobilized. Even uh, our Honorable Minister also visited the uh, site in the uh, month of uh, April and uh, he has given that much importance for completing the work and the field inspection, everything is doing it. Then contractor is also very much mm -hmm. alert and uh, he want to complete the work. So this is one project. Then another one project is construction of one permanent terminal at Bogeyville, the Dibrugar area. We are constructing one uh, Bogeyville. That is also through IPRCL. That work also already awarded. That is around some 35 crore project. Permanent terminal will come. These are all the major work we are undertaking in this northeast region. That is Assam. Similarly, other works also going on in the Silchar. Our office is there at Badarpur, Adivali office at Badarpur. And Karimganj also we are having terminal. This both terminal is being renovated through CPWD. That is also around some 6.4 crore project and that work also almost 85% completed. Now bank protection work is left due to this high flood water level and all. Mm -hmm. That work we are unable to do now. That will be started in the month of October when water level resides. These are all the major works we are undertaking and that will be for development of water rates. Right. If we uh, talk on the tourism point of view, like North East is having so much natural resources as you know. We have numbers of rivers, tributaries and all these things, hills areas, uh, river and areas, everything we have. Now, how do you see that your organization is helping in boosting the tourism sector in North East, particularly if you talk on the river tourism? Our Honorable Prime Minister, he has already flagged off what vessel that MV Ganga Villas right. from Varanasi. It is the world longest river cruise vessel started from Varanasi and reached Bogeville by traveling 3200 kilometer to Dibrugar. It reached safely there and it was received by our Honorable Union Minister Sri Sarvananda Sanwal sir on 28th February this year. It was reached. It took almost 49 days 
travel from Varanasi to Bogibil and it has came through National Waterway 1 that is Ganga from Varanasi. Then after that through Indo-Bangladesh Protocol Route that is Sundarban and Bangladesh Waterway. Then after that National Waterway number 2 that is River Brahmaputra. This river was having around 28 foreign tourists and reached safely a Dibrugar. By seeing this safe movement all this thing, many tourist people are also approaching for uh, um, doing this type of same trip and all. That vessel also after reaching this in Dibrugar on 28th February, it started back with a new set of crews, foreigners from Dibrugar and it has safely went back to Calcutta. Now from Calcutta to Dhaka they are doing uh, trips. In the month of September, they are planning to come again from Varanasi to Dibrugar. This itself shows that publicity of a public mind that this waterway is good for tourism purpose, that cruise movement, as well as cargo also. Now, a lot of cargo people are also coming forward for moving their um, cargo also. Now, even Assam Petrochemical Limited also mm-hmm. shown interest. They came to our Pandu port and they have shown interest. They want to move their petroleum products from Pandu port to uh, Bangladesh through waterway. That also we are tying up with these parties to do that one. One more thing what we have done is IWA for increasing this cargo movement. We have given our Pandu port terminal as well as Dubri port terminal and operation and maintenance tender. We have floated open tender and we have awarded that work also to the party who will be doing more from his side, more initiatives for seeing that the cargo from Pandu and Dubri is increased to many fold. We have given target also to them. Minimum Per month, 3,000 metric ton cargo they have to uh, assure movement from this from Pandupot or Dubri port. With this one, what happened? They will be having their own setup and they will be doing this uh, traffic business, uh, all these things. Seeing that this waterway uh, movement will be increased. They will be taking care of this diverting cargo also through road and uh, railways, whatever cargo is moving. That will be seen move through this waterway. That also already we have awarded. Then those parties have already came here and within a month, they will be taking this boat and they will be starting this operation. By that, one more helping hand IWA is getting from that private side also mm-hmm. to boost this cargo movement. Right. And uh, when we talk about the uh, active policy of the government, uh, Guwahati has been a very important role to play here. Now, uh, having said that, we have the Brahmacha and Barak Pihar and we have neighboring countries like uh, Bangladesh and Myanmar. So, how do you see the potentiality of developing the riverine expressway or the cargo movement connecting Bahamutra, Bangladesh, Myanmar and adjoining areas mm. and what steps are being taken to develop the river route? Now for developing this river route, this IWT development, this entire northeast region, we are having a 20 national waterways. See, total all over India there are 111 national waterways are there, but whereas the northeast is blessed with 20 national waterways. Whereas the IWA, we are now presently, we are developing only the four national waterways, that is Brahmaputra, Dansiri River, mm-hmm. Gopli and Barak River, we are developing now. Rest other waterways, what happened, we have requested state government also, like in Tirupura, Mizoram, Manipur mm-hmm. and all, to come up with justification for developing their waterways. Because all these 20 national waterways, we have done a study, feasibility study we have done and we have uploaded all this report in website also. Anybody can download that one, the state government can download and see the feasibility of the area which will be developed in phase-wise manner, then they can come. Whereas this, all projects will be developed under central sector scheme, that is CSS, where 100% financial support will be provided by center, that is within this northeast state. About, talking about this Bangladesh and this uh, Myanmar, and all, Bangladesh is, there is a protocol between India and Bangladesh and 305 crore has been sanctioned by Indian government for developing the waterways with 20-80 per shared basis. That waterway is being developed in Bangladesh. That connectivity is already we are creating coming to this um, Bangladesh border Dubri and as well as to Karim Ganshi, Badarpur also waterway Bangladesh. is there. And Barak Valley is also connectivity there through Bangladesh. Now second is through the connectivity through Myanmar. Myanmar also this Kaladan project is mm-hmm. there. That is a major project which our government has sanctioned 2,900 crore value project. From Cityway to Palawa, that is 158 kilometers exactly, that the waterway component has already been developed. Now the jetty, everything we have completed, it is now under operation maintenance. To make that road component, we are waiting for the road component to complete, 110 
kilometer road component is left because of this change in the political situation and all that work was delayed otherwise road component also would have been completed and now this waterway is ready and when road component is completed we will have connectivity through myanmar also mm-hmm. that is a very good project it will be connecting directly to mizoram once it connected to mizoram that is indo burma border that one place is called zorinpi that is the border of india and mm-hmm. bangladesh myanmar zorinpi that place when we connected then nearby national highway is there the entire north is region like tripura manipur and everything will be connected that is the international connectivity now two days before also from the government of nagaland their officials their deputy general manager and all they came with the proposal also for developing the tizu river then we had a discussion then now we have suggested also and uh, given idea for modify and uh, making that project proposal in phase wise development so that it will be easy for mm. approval for ministry also and they also got that idea and now they will be revising and submitting within a week and after that it will be take up with the ministry for sanctioning that one like that within this state also all state and international level adjacent to this mm-hmm. northeast also is fully we are developing so this project will certainly boost the tourism as well as Definitely. you know you know industrial sector in northeast yes yes the karatan project is also main thing per annum 75000 metric ton of cargo we mm-hmm. are planning to move annually so that it can connect to mizoram directly instead of coming through bangladesh or through that uh, jalpaiguri the chicken neck and all that way also can be cargo and passenger tourists also can come yeah, this is uh, one hand is it environment friendly and yeah. secondly is it fit as well yes that's for us right coming to the employment and the job creation opportunities yeah. how do you see this in the this sector specifically not yeah. it is helping in creating job directly yeah. or indirectly see what happened in this one first of all this for getting this manpower for this iwd sector mm-hmm. we need a a separate training to be given to these people then only this job will come because this is a specialized job work is related to water many people will not have that expertise in getting that job in water way that is why with the guidance of our honorable union minister ms sri sarvananda sonawal sir we have created one skill development center at this guwahati itself we are having one institute that is nini at patna where people from here north is going to patna getting trained in this it is very expensive also that is we have started giving training also to them now we are going to publish in newspaper also about the training to this local people who are all interested are doing job in this water connectivity line once they get this training in this one then they can get the job opportunity very easily in this waterway sector because we want to train the people in a water way because many people they bring that vessel and all but they don't get manpower for doing work in water water way is little uh, difficult and uh, safety also to be concerned those all these things we are taking care and we are giving training also with once this training is given to these people it will definitely boost the employment opportunity in this water way sector that is the main uh, purpose of our uh, creating skill center also when we talk on the inland water issues there is one concern as you just mentioned is the safety part and we had instances in assam particularly mm-hmm. where we have seen the issues of boat and ferry cases yes. this is very unfortunate incident and mm-hmm. uh, earlier we have seen now coming to the security and safety measure what mm-hmm. measures do you have mm-hmm. for the safety measures and what steps been taken by your department by your ministry now what happened for this uh, safety all this thing, we are making a SOP also mm-hmm. for standard operating procedure along with the state government also in case of any emergency any accident or any oil spillage or any you know, issues and all that what should be the action taken by each department the concerned stakeholder should know that one what is our role SOP standard preparation once it is approved then it will be circulated and this also we are preparing in consultation with state government also one that is coming then this will be mostly taken care of. what are the new initiatives being taken up by your department now this um, one of the major um, movement in national waterway is over dimensional or over weight cargo mm-hmm. which is being brought through this national waterway this in numaliga refinery mm-hmm. it is having a 3 million metric ton per annum capacity now it is increased to three fold 9 million metric ton they want to bring bigger size uh, equipment over dimensional cargo through water only it cannot come through road or railway all these equipments are foreign made it is coming to aldia diamond harbor or calcutta and all. it is coming through waterway only national waterway one that is ganga it comes and then through indo bangladesh protocol route after that it enters national waterway number 2 uh, bangladesh border dubri it enters and it goes to numaligarh that is dansiri mu from the dansiri river it goes to numaligarh jetty already first consignment started in 18th march 
and it reached this uh, then nrl jt safely on 16th june where our honorable union minister for shipping and waterways sri sarvanand sonawal received that uh, vessel on 16th june at nrl jt now second consignment it came on 12th june now it was started from diamond harbor on 8th june and safely it has reached pandu this first consignment came in the month of march that was a leanest season where water mm. level is less mm. that consignment of over dimensional cargo no? that is dht reactor around 521 ton capacity and the size also around 8 meter dia very big size cargo it came now this cargo which is that came on 12th july it is 700 ton it is little more than that one and diameter is also bigger in size 10 meter now another three consignment already reached our border it has already dubri border it has reached these all started from diamond harbor on 24th june started now this vessel three vessel together only they are sailing and they will be reaching pandu and the nrl it will be reaching by this month end that is 31st july it will be reaching this is a very big achievement this because this over dimensional cargo that to, this nrl project is a 35000 crore project being monitored at highest level and time bound work also had to complete and now this five consignment already it has come total 24 consignment is there this is a big achievement about this waterway movement where we are connecting national waterway 1 and national waterway 2 also through indo bangladesh protocol route thank you sir for giving us time and your valuable input okay thank you you just heard an interview with mr a selva kumar director inland waterways authority of india kuhate and the interviewer was manas pritham sharma and now it's time for a delightful nagami's comedy love song by Suneplam Tour and Malay Kitsu. Oh, Chuli, Mobile number to ek par TV. Ha! Nadi bu mui. Kolkori bo morning evening. Line my bo. Kila line mar mo? Kushi kushi number mo nadi bo. Era to kai sabi. This edition of Northeast Diary. Do join us next week to hear more stories from this enchanting part of India. Bye bye. program was scripted and presented by Lucy T Chattopadhyay produced by Vinita Thakur with assistance from Kumar Gaurav it was brought to you by the news services division of Akashwani